do you think the lack of such, so not having discipleship uh, and being kind of isolated into your, you know, the people groups that you're used to, do you think that that can lead to comparison and also division? Yeah. Um, yeah, especially, I mean, we're talking about generational, uh, one of the biggest comparisons, if we talk about generational comparison, uh, is there's a lot of Christian, there's a lot of people in the generations older than us that are having to figure out who's going to take over my church in the future and who I'm going to pass the baton to, or who's going to help me lead this business and take over one day, or who's going to lead this nonprofit or whatever it is. Like we all have like full-time jobs and um, eventually, especially if we were the founder and the, the starter of the organization, um, we feel this weight of, are we going to be able to pass the baton well to someone younger? And I think uh, there's a lot of area and room for comparison to seep in uh, as we're thinking about that, as well as for us as young leaders, as, as they're considering us, we could easily compare ourselves and say, this is what they did, but I'm going to totally do it different. To think that everything the generation before us did is wrong um, is just not realistic. Um, and sometimes we do that even with our parents. Uh, I feel like a lot of young people are like, I don't want to be anything like my parents. Uh, but there are even, I think, the worst of parents have lessons and principles within their parenting that you can sal still salvage and redeem. Um, and so uh, it's not to say we should just be a splitting image and copy, but I, I think that um, where we see comparison in that sense in the Bible is probably strongest in Saul and David. Um, I always think, what would have happened if Saul wasn't jealous of David and Saul didn't compare himself to David. Like what could have happened for the kingdom if Saul didn't care about who got the credit? Um, if he was totally fine with David, uh, as they sing the song and they said, Saul has slayed a thousands and David's tens of thousands. Uh, if, he, if he stepped back and thought for a second, it's not like they're erasing me. It's not like they're saying I've done nothing. It's not like I'm not getting any credit. It's just that he's getting more credit than me now. My time is kind of coming to an end, and can I help him, um, or do I feel like everything was fine until other people noticed him more than noticed David more than Saul? Uh, and my hope is uh, that that's not something that holds us back. That we're like, and I see it sometimes with older generations. Like I've, we put in all this work to get where we are, and now here you guys are just going to mess it all up. Or or I worked so hard to get here, and now you guys get it so easy. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not about us. Um, it's not even about, as a millennial, it's not even about millennials, I don't feel like anymore. It should be about Gen Zs. Uh, I feel like what could happen is millennials could wait until their late 40s and be like, now let's start thinking about Gen Z because it took forever to like start finally taking us serious. We had to get into our 30s and then our 40s to finally enjoy it. But then you're going to lose the generation and you're going to finally start thinking about them the last five years of your ministry that it's like, they're not even young anymore. Um, and so my hope is that uh, the more we care about God's name being raised and we don't care or need our name to be raised with it, the more you're gonna see the kingdom impact and the more joy and peace and contentment you're gonna see because you're gonna realize you got a lot of other people on your team. And um, I'd also say, and I'm sure you've experienced this, I'm sure you've had some older people pour into you or open doors for you that I would say older leaders that actually, instead of comparing themselves or criticizing next gen, that they actually um, open doors for me or believe in me, even bigger than I believe in myself. Um, I would always run through a wall for those kind of leaders. And so um, I think there's a loyalty that is birthed uh, among older leaders that do that for young people. And I even actually going back to Saul and David think that happened. Uh, for the rest of David's life, he always honored Saul and never wanted to forsake God's anointed. And part of that, I think, is because Saul actually did believe in David until he got more credit. Saul let David, as someone who's not a warrior, go and fight after 40 days, Goliath, of all things. Like, that actually took a lot of faith and confidence and trust for Saul to do that. And not only that, I think this is going to have to happen in our generation, is Saul didn't make him wear his own armor. Or I would say for us, uh, Saul didn't make him do it the way he did it and say, this is the way we've always done it. You guys can't come up in here and try to do it different. Uh, that's so different. We don't like that. 
we just want you to do it our way, but be younger. Uh, Saul's like, okay, I don't understand why in the world you wouldn't wear armor when you're about to fight that guy. Um, but he lets them. And, and I mean, I think we both know that if David would have fought Saul, uh, I'm sorry, if David would have fought Goliath with armor, hand-to-hand -hand combat, I think he would have got crushed. And so I'm glad he didn't. I think times called for something different. And thank God David, as a young leader, did something different. So, um, yeah, I'm hopeful. And I, I'm praying for more and more leaders, including our generation, that just doesn't care about the credit as much as they care about Christ's name and him getting the glory. But we'll see crazy, crazy cool stuff happen if that's the case.